Hey guys, this is Elise. Um, just want to welcome you back to the project Catholic Christian Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. Today, I'm going to be introducing one of my very best friends and one of the panelists, Pam. Hi, my name's Pam. Um, I'm really excited to be part of this project. And, you know, why I'm interested is, first of all, because I was invited. Um, I think it's important, uh, especially in dialogues around issues of race, to be invited um, as a person of the predominant uh, culture. Um, it's not always a good idea to horn in. It's kind of best to ask to be invited. Um, so um, the other reason I'm interested is I'm in kind of a season of personal visioning and discernment relative to my career and my ministry. Um, and I feel led to it um, because of the invitation. Um, as a mental health uh, person, uh, my personal definition of success and you know, even before I chose this career was taken by, from Emerson. And um, it's to know that even one life has breathed easier because I've lived. So in the current dialogue, in the current context, when people's lives are literally being snuffed out because they can't breathe, that's taking a whole new context. And so um, I see this as my way of helping with that. Um, what do I hope others will get? Uh, some insight and self-reflection about our own origins of bias. Uh, I think change starts with oneself. And it also takes place in one-on-one -on -one dialogue with others in an environment of unconditional positive regard. So I hope that these panel discussions will be an example of how to have those uh, conversations in the same spirit of unconditional positive regard. So a bit about my story. Um, I'm currently a member of the middle class, haven't always been so. I'm a white woman new to the intersection of senior, senior citizen. So I was born in the late 50s um, in the northern panhandle of West Virginia. So I remember the uh, civil unrest of the 50s and 60s, but that's through the lens of a child. And my remembrance is of the reactions of the adults around me during that time. Um, vacationing through the South um, while that was going on and seeing um, signs on gas station windows soap that say KKK meeting here tonight and kind of being afraid of being in those uh, areas during that time. Um, I attended one of two consolidated public schools as a high schooler. Uh, in the, the whole county where I grew up. So roughly 1,500 teenagers, um, 500 in my particular class, and one African-American student within that whole environment. So that kind of gives the context to my growing up. Um, I moved to Central Ohio in the late 80s after the closing of um, heavy industry all along the Ohio Valley. And it really wasn't until I attended undergrad and grad school in the second half of the first decade of the 2000s that I was confronted with issues of race. Um, part of my privilege is that I didn't have to think about it. Didn't have, it wasn't, wasn't on my radar. So, um, you know, I was confronted in a personal way through developing friendships and through hard conversations that took place inside and outside the classroom as part of multicultural training for my career. Um, so I had the opportunity to be engaged in a workshop during that time that was called During Your Own Work. So I examined my own biases and, um, you know, discovered some of the history of the United States that wasn't shared in my predominantly Caucasian public school education. Um, and I've also unfortunately seen how issues of race play themselves out in the church. Uh, through personal experience um, with a congregation that um, moved through the demographic change from rural to suburban to urban um, environment and how uh, personnel changes that reflected that change in demographic um, affected the congregants in, in a position of leadership kind of seeing the underbelly, how that um, 
raised its ugly head in the congregation that uh, we purport that we uh, love our neighbors of, as ourselves, that we are all um, created with the image of God within us. And also, uh, you know, part of my personal belief that it's the spirit of God within us that will help us overcome um, these issues. So that's my story. I'm um, glad to be part of the conversation and thank you, Elise, for the opportunity. And thank you so much for sharing from your heart. And it's great to have you on this project. I'm looking forward to our conversations, both here and in our personal spaces. And um, with that, we'll close this video. Thank you and stay tuned. God bless.